Hey folks, Jan Bernakovich here with All Points Design. That's allpointsdesign.ca. And today we're talking about the Oregon State University Permaculture Template, specifically the Local Ecology Survey. Now, why do a survey of the local ecology? It's a good question. And if you understand it, I think you'll better understand this assignment and why it's so important. So wherever we are in the world, there is an established climax ecology where there is a succession. So there's a pioneer stage, there is a intermediate stage, there is a late stage, and then there's many stages in between. And even though we paved paradise and put up a parking lot, we can still connect with that ecology because that site is uniquely suited between its biotic and abiotic, its living and non-living elements to create that ecology. And if we understand that ecology, if we understand what that blueprint is, what are the climax tree species? What are the climax uh, animals? Uh, what are the numbers that we're expecting to see there? We have, in essence, a blueprint of what already works really well there. And one of the major issues, what's called a type one error in permaculture is going against the grain of what the natural ecology or what the existing cycles are attempting to do. Type 1 error is also something that is difficult to come back from. So when we take a look at the design site in our example here, outside of Calgary, uh, there tends to be a number of uh, ecological classifications done by biologists, conservationists, and government in local areas. Now, this will not be true for every place in the world. Uh, I'm very lucky in Canada to have this type of information and this type of care and duty of care towards understanding the natural history around us. If you don't have that type of information, you'll have to rely on friends, families, neighbors, sight sounds, your own experience, reaching out to individuals, reaching out to biologists. Is that completely 100% necessary for this course? No. Uh, is it a really good idea if you're interested in design? Absolutely. So something to think about when you're going through the local ecology survey is that there's lots of elements in this survey there are the local food chain there's the bird conversation there's the local food chain there's the succession there's the specific uh, food web and a climax ecology there's there's additional information and do your best uh, you don't need every single photo you don't need every single titling but i will tell you this the more educated you are about your bioregion the more detail you'll be able to understand about your site. So how this plays out in our, in our conversation is uh, I pulled up my first map here and it looked like Calgary was actually uh, making itself an island uh, within the existing ecology, which is um, human hubris at its best. And then I found another, which actually put three different areas, parkland, central parkland, parkland, foothills, parkland, and grassland, foothills, fescue, really at the apex of where my site is. I then found a number of uh, plant guides. So each one of these I found was a plant guide that'll show me the different plants, uh, the different um, ecological communities that are there. And with those plant guides and plant communities, I can then understand the families. Uh, I can understand generally, does this biome tend towards berries or tend towards vines or tend towards uh, climax trees or hardwoods or softwoods? I can get a sense of what the pattern is and then I can work inside of that pattern. Now, as that's loading, I'm working with a, uh, an alumni of actually this course, the Oregon State University Permaculture Design course, who reached out and contracted me to mentor him through his first couple of designs. And we just had our first conversation the other day and immediately I started to look at what, what is the specific eco district, as we call them in Canada, of this area. So I found that it was within the eco district E6, E1 Stratford. But what's really interesting is that there was data about the woody species diversity. And this is the template. As I look through this and I start to get a sense of okay, interesting. There's quite a number of prunus here. That means we're probably going to do cultivated varieties of cherry and plum. Those will probably work. As I take a look at the roses, uh, as I take a look at um, uh, vaccinums and uh, uh, the viburnums, the blueberries, the cranberries, I know I can start to work with different types of cultivars like that going back to resources like the Natural Capital Plant Database. So the why of this assignment is understand the ecology of your site so that way you can start to work within that ecology and do it well and don't worry so much about every single photo i've got some tips and tricks coming up in the next tutorials about how to make that easy and quick 
but know that every minute you invest in this assignment is a minute where you can start to play in the design because you understand the existing ecology. Thanks so much for listening, folks. If you found this useful, hit subscribe, hit like, put a little comment down below, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks so much.